How's it going guys? One of the biggest decisions you're gonna make when you start playing Warcraft Rumble is which leader you're gonna choose. So in this video, I aim to help you pick the right leader and pick the right talent. You're gonna quickly be able to put a talent on your leader afterwards and it's important to pick the right talent. Uh, talents do get gated behind rarity, which is gonna be a very time gated process that we'll talk about in another video that we also talked about in the beginner guide if you wanna go check that out. So you make sure you pick the right talent. This video is gonna help you do that. So let's get into it, and we're going to start right away with Tyrion Fordragon, or Fordring rather. Uh, and let's just talk about what he does in general. So his leader ability, his Holy Light, he heals all nearby friendly units. He's one of, I think, two healers in the game. It's very impactful. He is one of the best leaders in the game. We'll do a tier list at the end so you can kind of see it all in one shot, make your decisions better that way. He also happens to have some of the best talents in the game. We're going to focus on PvE for this video. So I think PvE is uh, objectively the best way to push your account as fast as possible. Get through the campaign. There's lots of gold there. Get into the heroic campaign. There's even more gold there. So much experience to be had there. And also in dungeons, you're going to want PvE stuff there. So Consecrate is great. It drops like AoE fire on the ground. If you're familiar with World of Warcraft, you know what Consecration is. Uh, it kills squad minis in one shot. It rips apart tanks. So he kind of wins those exchanges better. That's for PvE. For PvP, it's probably Divine Shield. And By the Light is kind of like a happy median in between the two for PvE and PvP. But I do think as your starting one, you're going to want to go with Consecrate. All right, let's move on over to Jaina. So Jaina, she's okay. Look, she does have a leader ability, Arcane Brilliance, increasing the level of your spells by three. Jaina was the first character I chose as a leader. And I did end up getting what I think is the best talent on her. So I did get to climb quite quickly through the campaigns, but I would never suggest her uh, to a new player. And the reason for that is pretty much because of her range. Her range being seven and because of how squishy she is, she loses any exchange with another range character. It's really unfortunate. But if you are going to go Jaina, uh, her talent clear casting is the best for PvE. So it's going to cost one less for your spells. I paired Jaina with Blizzard. I would drop Jaina. You then immediately have to use your Blizzard. It would eradicate people because it's like an extreme level because of her leader ability and because I put a lot of experience into leveling Blizzard. So I do think clear casting is the best for PvE. Blink is probably better for PvP, but if you want to do an alliance leader for PvP, I think you're better off just doing Tyrion. Or our next character, which is going to be Maiev Shadow Song. Now, Maiev is the Unbound Queen, so Maiev's cost is is reduced by one for each unbound piece you play she costs six though now she is not worth six so her leader ability is also something that just you have to do to play her because she's so squishy she can immediately get popped after she comes out of stealth so you do want to drop her cost down so you're kind of pigeonholed into using a very unbound heavy army that's not super conductive to the pve uh hardcore campaigns or heroic campaigns if you will so I don't suggest Maya for PvE reasons, but for PvP, she's super fun, very toxic, very interested. Um, her talents are okay. Enveloping Mist, there's some interest there. Deploying Smoke Bomb because she is an unbound unit. You kind of drop that if you have some assaulting wave going, whether that be a Drake, some Whelplings, maybe some chickens, the deadly chickens. You could put them into stealth. They'll just like kind of walk under enemy flying units, get to wherever they're going, and they'll pop off that way. So Enveloping Mist, I do think that is a skill-based talent. So that's an interesting one. But Shadow Step, I do think, is the best for PvE. So it'll periodically teleport away when she gets attacked. She'll go directly to the range unit. So then you're Maiev. She's not walking through Dragon's Breath. She's not just dying to Dark Spirit Troll. she take one hit, teleport to them, gut them, and then she kind of lives to see another day. Um, remorseless dealing uh, double damage for two minutes or two seconds after killing an enemy that's good if you're like doing punch downs and you're just spamming unbound units on the boss and the boss happens to summon a little unit she gets double damage now she's doing more but you also run the risk of her just getting one shot i definitely don't recommend my ev uh, for starters but she's a fun one to play once you get going i love hogger they made hogger really fun so hogger's leader ability is his movement and attack speed increase by 35 percent each time you play him so if you have a low cost army you kind of just you cycle through your army and you keep summoning hogger every single chance you get and by the end he's like sonic the hedgehog meets hulk he's just running to his objective smash 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 there's a super fun sound animation on it and towers die enemies die you win uh it's like a Oh, it's like a rage timer. It's really fun. 
And he already does have a fast attack speed to start out. So I really like Hogger. He's just really fun. All right, so as far as his talents go, I like to feed into that leader ability, which is Hamhawk. So ha Hogger also gains 10% max health every time he's played. So he gets 35% uh, movement speed and attack speed plus 10% health. He becomes a mega tank with a mega big club and he just wrecks people. I think that's the long game. I've been using Hogger in my B-Sec to push heroic campaigns. My beast deck is the easiest to beat the hardest nose, which is kind of funny because I, I don't really like the beast faction. Spoiled meat gaining poison is interesting. Uh, Fatal Frenzy, I don't think is good at all. So Fatal Frenzy on death, bloodless nearby beast. The problem is once Hogger is like deployed a few times, he's so fast, he outpaced all the other beasts. And if he doesn't have Hamhawk, he's very likely to die kind of alone because he just ran into the enemies willy-nilly. So I don't think you want to do uh, Fatal Frenzy at all. Hamhawk, definitely the way to go. We got, uh, I don't know, Char Chargla. Don't pick Chargla, okay? Her leader ability sounds fun, uh, but it's so RNG-based that it's just not great. So your minis in hand share the same cost. What exactly? What? What does that mean? If you have... Uh, in your army, if you have everything costing between four and six, you're always going to be just never being able to play anything. If you have everything between one and two, you'll be able to spam things for sure, but they're so weak. There's no tankiness there. They kind of just fall over. And if you have a mixture of things, which I think is probably the way to go, then you're at the mercy of RNG. So what ends up happening is uh, if you have like a six costing black rock golem, right? And he's in your hand well all of a sudden your kobold is going to cost six your golem is going to cost six your harpies are going to cost six everything's going to cost six until you play one unit and there is nothing worse than summoning a kobold at six gold because you need to just kind of get your cycle going again uh i really don't like chargla maybe there's a skill cap there maybe there's a happy median keeping your deck between one and four and you get to play cheap blizzards that's what i do whenever i have to use her um for like arc like surges to help with the guild progression but I just really don't like her. As far as her talents go, I do think the obvious choice is Cavernous Mist. The play cost reduced by one, that's gonna help the deck's overall RNG cost drop lower. Nature's Grasp is kinda cool, root two additional nearby enemies. That's what she does. She's, she's a ranged target that roots. She'll die to, to aerial targets. I just, I really don't like her. Um, and then there's this, the Spirit Passage. Minis played for five gold, gain a level, and deploy in stealth. That might be cool for PvP, but the second you start having five, six gold pieces, once again, you start summoning a kobold for six gold and that kobold gets a level. Cool, thanks. So I don't really like that talent whatsoever. The last beast, old Merc guy. So I have a friend, Skinny Boston, who swears by his character, says he's the absolute best. He's interesting, okay? So his leader ability, for five seconds after deploying, he'll summon a Murloc Tidehunter on your base, your main base. Uh, for each gold spent. So when you summon him, all of your gold becomes like little green dots. And for every gold you spend, you're going to summon a Murloc Tidehunter. So if you drop, if you wait till you have 10 gold, you drop him and then you summon a six, a six cost unit in, you're going to get six Murlocs. They're going to start running uh, towards, they're all Tidehunters, so they're the range units. And they start firing off. He's an interesting character. He is fast, so he moves quickly. Uh, he kind of gets himself into trouble. So you really got to wait until your gold is stockpiled. There's a little bit of a skill cap there. Um, and then he also has really bad range at 6.5. So he gets himself in the treble. And if he dies, you lose this leader ability. You're not getting all those Murlocs. So that can be an issue. As far as talents go, he does have two really interesting ones. Tip of the Spear. So the Tidehunters spawn at Old Murkai's location instead. This could be really cool if you summon your Old Murkai and there's chests along the way. So chests are popping, you're getting more gold, so you're able to spend more units. Well, those Tidehunters, they spawn on top of him, and then you have a little army doing their thing instead of having just like a trail of the Tidehunters running towards the objective. Uh, Marathon of the Murlocs, I think this is the best for PvE. Uh, you do end up having that trail, but in having that trail in PvE, you tend to get great objective control, and then you can get an easy win that way. So what does it do? It increases his leader ability by five seconds, so there's another five second window where you get to summon in more of those uh, Murloc Tidehunters. Then there's Electric Eels, briefly stun enemies. I see absolutely no value in that, uh, in the gimmick that old Merc guy's trying to do. All right, moving on to Blackrock. We're gonna have Rend. Now Rend is, I think, one of the 
the, the few S tier characters in the game. His leader ability is pretty skill capped. The way you can line it up and do some amazing things. Um, so what is it? Black in the skies. Your other flying troops cost one less gold when Ren is in play, but no less than two. This is fine. Uh, so it doesn't apply to like the Griffin Raider. She's already cost two. She can't go lower than that. But Whelplings that cost three, all of a sudden you have an unbound Whelpling that costs two. You have Drakes that cost three instead. Harpies that cost two. Or if you have the gold trade on the Harpies, they cost three. It just gives you a lot of um, maneuverability when it comes to summoning different kinds of um, attack squads, if you will, to go and get objectives. Uh, and Ren himself, he does insane damage on his fire breath. When he dies, he actually pops off the dragon and he charges. He's got some really good talents. I have a talent that I really like for PvE, and I have a hard time deciding if this is the best talent or the second best, because I, I don't have enough uh, resources in him to try the second one. So I currently have Flaming Soul on him, so it'll cast Living Bomb when his Drake dies. It puts Living Bomb on all the enemies around me. If my rend makes it to a, a boss and then gets blown up because the boss just summoned three range units around him and he got taken down it puts living bomb on all of them and the boss just gets one shot so it's it's a really cool situational talent for sure but scale and steel seems to probably be a better idea so you gain resistance when flying so you're more resistant to elemental attacks and you gained armor when you dismount so when you dismount if you're hitting a tower he's getting hit a lot better just it, it's making a lot more sense so I do think Scale and Seal probably pulls ahead for PvE. Probably Flaming Soul for PvP. And then Legionnaire, I don't really see the value here. So he dismounts when first taking damage. The Drake continues to fight. So the Drake is still doing fire. He pops off. He's doing his attacks. But now you're vulnerable to like cleave damage. Um, if there's an air unit, your, your Ren completely dies instead of taking some hits on the Drake. And maybe you can send in a safe pilot to save him or some sort of Arcane Torrent, Blizzard... Um, polymorph, whatever that you could do to kind of save the unit. I'm not a huge fan of Legionnaire, but maybe that is a skill thing as well. All right, we got General Drakish. Drakit. Oh, I can't say it. I'm sorry, guys. I just can't say it. He's slow. That's his main problem. But he does have an interesting leader ability. Nearby enemies taking 50% more elemental damage. 50% is a very, very big deal in this game. Uh, in that, we can have a Fire Mental with him. You can have a Shaman. You can have the Pyromancer. You can have Orc, uh, Ogre, Mage. That's just a lot of damage that could be hitting the enemy. So 50% is nice, but they need to be nearby general. And because he's so slow, I do find that hard to line up, which is why I definitely don't recommend him as a starting character. Um, yeah, he's really, really slow. But he is tanky, so if he reaches the tower, that tower is definitely in trouble. As far as his talents go, I think there's only one that really makes much sense. So chromatic scales, uh, grants nearby allies the resistance trait. Like, it's cool, it makes them tankier, but they're super vulnerable to, like, aerial units if it's around uh, general. I, and he's so slow that they tend to just outpace him, so they're not really getting that benefit for very long, unless it's a clash that you happen to be lined up with properly there. It's just tough to do. Piercing blows, I do think, is the best. So attacks pierce through enemies in a line, so it's like a conal attack, so he's destroying squads. Like, if chickens come at him and he doesn't have piercing blows, chickens kill him. If he has piercing blows, see you later, chickens. See you later, defiance bandits. See you later, uh, spiders. Any kind of squad, just one shots. And if he goes into some tanks, because he's so tanky, he will get a lot of damage on both of the units or multiple units instead of just one. Then, lasting legacy on death drop of banner. Nearby enemies take 50% additional damage, elemental damage. This has the same issue as chromatic scales does. Because he's so slow, unless you're timing it perfectly, which is tough to do in PvE because you're kind of always pushing for objectives, he kind of tends to die alone. And if you if you do, if you put all your eggs in one basket and you're timing his death around when your other units get there, it's kind of tough. It, it's, it's more hassle than it's worth in the end, uh, especially because it's only elemental damage. So a fast unit like the Warsong Raider, Chickens, Harpies, they're not doing elemental damage. So it's a little bit more difficult to line up. I don't really recommend General. All right, Sneed. Sneed is one of my favorite characters. He's got such a fun gimmick. So Sneed before Greed. Gain two gold when a siege damage unit destroys a tower, captures a media stone, or opens a chest. Getting more gold in this game to just overwhelm your, your opponent, whether that be PvE, PvP, is the name of the game. Having more units on the field that are just causing chaos, causing havoc, havoc is definitely uh, a way to go. Now, 
He is pretty slow. He's got that medium speed. He does do AoE damage with his basic, which is nice. Only to melee, obviously. He, he loses to flying units. Um, and he himself is a siege damage unit. So if he gets a chest or he takes a tower, he does activate that gold, which is nice. He has some interesting talents, I gotta say. Some are very difficult to grade. So mine is money, friend. Gain the minor trait. This could be interesting in PvE, in PvP... Also, I, I'm not a huge fan of it myself. I'd rather him be going and causing havoc by, you know, opening a chest in one shot, ripping towers apart, or facing off against enemy tanks. I don't really want him to stop and start farming gold. Lead with Greed is my preferred for PvE. He'll gain an additional two gold when Sneed triggers his passive. So it's four gold total. So I love parrying Sneed with the Goblin Sappers. If there's a tower nearby right off rip, throw your Goblin Sappers at it. They take the tower. That's an immediate four gold in your pocket. So you, are, you end up like spamming, you spam your deck basically. Sometimes you're gonna find yourself at 10 gold, not spending it fast enough in certain maps. Um, this really helps in the Heroic Campaign. So in the Heroic Campaign, I love using my Sneed. It's one of my easier families to get done. Land Grab though, this is a really, really strong PvP talent. Levels are so important in PvP that if you can quickly get a chest, quickly get a tower, and all of a sudden your Sneed is two levels higher, say he's all the way to level 10, oh my god, that is so deadly. He'll start one-shotting people. It's definitely the way to go for PvP, in my opinion. Um, but we're talking about PvE here right now. All right, Mr. Karn Bloodhoof, Kane Bloodhoof. I forget how we're supposed to say that. So, uh, Horde Troops have an increased 20% health. Kind of boring, right? But the thing about Kane is he's like a... It, it, it summons an army, basically. If you get him with the Warsong Raider, with the Torin Charger, all of a sudden you have this, like, super beefy army just kind of walking at you. And in PvE, it's a lot easier to make that army get done what you want to do. In PvP, it's easy, easily countered with unbound units or flying units. So he's definitely a PvE hero, in my opinion. PvP kind of lacks. Uh, he is a fast unit. Uh, he's only a fast unit because of the trait I have on him, actually. Uh, and let's talk about that because I don't know if this is the best talent. I think this is the best talent for PvE because it helps me uh, reach Warsong Raiders. But uh, the Reincarnation is so nice. It might be Reincarnation. If you're in control, Reincarnation is probably better. Okay. Reincarnation is probably better. So I do have the wrong one. So after death, you resurrect with 50% more health or 50% health once. So you die, you come back, you're still giving that 20% health to your allies. He does massive AoE damage on his like ground pound. That's really fun. Plane rider or plane running, moving 50% faster and you gain the fast trait. So what does that mean? It means he hauls ass. He'll keep up with your chickens. He'll keep up with your harpies. He'll keep up with your Warsong Raider, which I talked about. And they, they're like an assassination unit when it comes to towers or getting chests. It can be very important. It's it's pretty close between plane plane running and reincarnation. I'll give the, the I'll give the bump to reincarnation because it's also much better in PvP, I think. Uh, and then there's aftershock. When stun expires, affected enemies are dazed for five seconds. They just move a little bit slower. I'm not feeling that. Reincarnation planes running. They're both probably even. If you're gonna grab a blood hoof for PvE, grab whatever one you see there. You'll be fine. All right, we got a question from Twitch chat. If you pick the wrong talent, can you reselect it, change it? No. So what happens is when you pick the wrong talent, you get locked right here. Like you see, I have one slot open and I have plane running there. My blue slot is locked. My purple slot is locked as well. If I want to unlock those, I need to increase his rarity. Uh, and rarity is from this screen over here. You see how it says three out of 10 stars? To increase his rarity, I need to fill out those 10 stars. And that only happens through buying him in, with our gold premium currency. He's not always going to be available every week, which is why it's super important that we get the right talent. Thank you for bringing that question up. So that's it for Mr. For Mr. Bloodhoof. Resurrection or plain running, kind of take your pick there. Gromish Hellscream. I was sleeping on Mr. Gromish Hellscream. He's really fun, and Bloodlust is really impactful. So all, all nearby friendly units gain Bloodlust. If you can make a an attack unit follow him and they're getting bloodless the whole time like the dark spear troll um the tauren uh, charger bloodless on those characters is crazy powerful uh, and it just kind of lines up really well what i will say is he's a little bit on the squishy side as far as a melee character goes 
but that's just that's just the way it goes all right so for gromash he does have some interesting talents but blade storm gaining aoe blade spin uh ability damaging all nearby enemy allies or nearby enemies sorry um very powerful but i don't think it holds a candle to the next one mirror image so it'll summon two fragile mirror images when entering combat these mirror images rip people apart absolutely rip people apart um so i do think that is the way to go savage strikes deal double damage on enemies with, uh, who are below 50 percent health this does help him rip through uh enemies that are weakened but also towers that are weakened bosses that are weakened i.e when uh we're talking about pve they're considered part of these enemies it can be very good but i think mirror image helps you get to that point faster so if you're struggling to get an enemy to 50 percent and you're running out of time it, it could be an issue i think mirror images helps you beat bosses faster do healers heal faster with bloodlust i believe their cooldown to heal is reduced i do believe i've had a Tyrion gain bloodlust from a ogre mage and just spam healed like crazy all right and then our final faction baron rivendare i'm just gonna come out and say it baron rivendare is the best leader in the game if you get to choose baron rivendare as your first leader do that he's amazing so his army of the dead rivendare periodically summons skeletons at buildings you control so at your main base he's going to summon two every summon stone every tower that you take along the way he's going to summon an additional unit uh but we're going to talk about how we're going to make those units even better it's a very weak skeleton but it puts constant pressure on the lanes and the best part about it is once you've progressed further into controlling the map and you're at the top end just about to like start weakening the boss down all the chests that are behind you you tend to start ignoring them because you're focusing on what's going up up here those skeletons will collect all those chests for you they'll make sure any kind of unbound unit that sneaks by you they'll start beating up on that unbound unit it's a crazy ability but not only that he is a fast unit obviously he's on a pony right so he's super fast and he's armored so he tanks hits like a champ he gets to objectives quickly in pvp he's running the chest he's holding units off he's such an amazing character and he only gets amplified by his talents so he's got uh all three talents i think no sorry two talents are amazing one talents dog dog water death pack periodically sacrifice a nearby skeleton to be healed because he is a tank any kind of heal on him is like double beneficial so it's like a 30 percent heal he'll just sacrifice a skeleton all of a sudden he's back to full life and you're just you're kicking yourself like oh so death pack is a very strong talent to take skeletal frenzy nearby skeletons gain bloodlust uh because the skeletons are so squishy i don't really love this uh but you can also summon in skeletons to get the bloodlust so that's it's situationally okay but death pack is i think way better because of how tanky baron rivendare is then you have chill the grave wow chill the grave makes baron rivendare just a brand new character uh brand new leader that is so instead of summoning the skeletal warriors he'll summon skeletal mages these mages are range units with very good range and they slow so they do ice bolts like jaina does so if there's an enemy abomination an enemy cane blood hoof an enemy whatever the slow unit is it's almost like a stun at that point so this these skeletal mages they're such a pain in the butt they also obviously take out range units they'll destroy harpies they'll take out dragons they really disrupt the flow of of the game so baron rivendare i think wow if you get baron rivendare it's baron rivendare if you get no baron rivendare but Tyrion, you're gonna pick Tyrion. we'll talk tier list here in a second all right sylvanas i think there might be a skill issue with me and sylvanas i don't really like it very much you can see by her leader ability that she should be amazing but maybe she's supposed to be amazing in conjunction with playing with another player so we do know that there's going to be modes coming where we're going to be doing 2v2s so maybe one player is going to be sylvanas and that'll be like a supporting role let's talk about what she does so all undead and horde minis gain 30 percent movement speed when they're near her the problem is she doesn't gain the speed so it's not like all of your units are moving faster your units just kind of outpace her then they keep that distance so she's always in the back line but because she's squishy almost to the extent of jaina she's vulnerable to unbound units like a uh a worgen coming in and, and gimping her uh 
a whelpling summoning on her is a death sentence. The safety pilot is a death sentence. And yeah, as we just said in Twitch chat, she's so expensive at six gold. And that doesn't decrease like my Ev. And the Banshee is unreliable. The Banshee is so squishy, easily squashed. And her range, I wish her range was at least 0.5 higher. I wish it was nine so that she could at least trade with a Dark Spear Troll. As it is right now, a Dark Spear Troll, which costs three gold, will kill Sylvanas before she gets an attack off. So that's an even leveled, I should say. So that's a problem. And her talents, I chose the two wrong talents, which is why I think it's important to make a video like this so people don't make this mistake. Black Arrow, piercing through enemies in a line dealing elemental damage is by far her best talent. This rips through squads like harpies if they come at her, she'll kill them. If she doesn't have this talent, she'll actually die to the harpies. Same with whelplings, same with chickens, all that kind of stuff. She'll die to those units if she doesn't have this. So it's by far the best. Banshee's Wail, I thought this was interesting. So Scream on Death, stunning nearby enemies for three seconds. This is like the only way the Banshee ever actually lands on a unit. The problem is it always lands on some nonsense unit or some unit that has 5% life. So this Banshee, because you're not in control of when she dies, because you're at the mercy of whatever the AI in PvE or the player in PvP, when they take out your Sylvanas, it could be in a very inopportune time. There could be a cleave coming down from, a, from an abomination the second your Sylvanas dies, and that one-shots the Banshee, so RIP that. Not very... Not very... Uh, utilitizing i don't know i just made up a word anyway and then there's forsaken fury this is the one i thought was going to be the best nearby horde and undead minis gain fury so just like we fed into the hogger every time he summons he gets attack speed plus uh movement speed and then now he's getting uh health as well i tried to kind of make these go together so undead and horde minis got 30 percent uh movement speed near sylvanas and then also the uh fury trait the problem is like i said before a nice distance is created between them and then they're just not benefiting from it so it's just like really poorly designed in my opinion sylvanas is one of the few characters that i would say just avoid as an opening character i don't know if she's available as an opening character yet so anyway let's talk about the last character blood mage thalnos he's he's pretty good he's, he's right on the verge of being great but he's overshadowed by baron rivendare as far as like I want to make sure I have the best undead leader slash army for when I do heroic campaigns. Like, Blood Mage is great, but Baron Rivendare is amazing. So, let's talk about what he does, though, because he does do some interesting things. He gains one level for each spell you play until he dies. So, his, his level can just go crazy. I don't know if it can go past 30. Maybe it can. Maybe there's no cap on that. Uh, but he's it's just an amazing character. He also does AoE on his range attacks, whereas Jaina and Sylvanas are doing single target attacks and they're just getting destroyed unless unless you got the piercing thing on, on Sylvanas, of course. Blood Mage Thanos, he does like an AoE explosion. So when he throws one attack at a Harpy, boom, all Harpies are gone. So I do think Blood Mage Thanos is probably the best like slow moving caster leader. He's got that going for him. And he does have that 8.5 range, the same as Sylvanas, but he gets way tankier because he's getting those levels. He is unfortunately slow, uh, but that kind of helps. You want him kind of taking his sweet time to get to where he's going, so you can spam spells, increasing his level as you go. As far as his talents go, I do think Bane is the best. So I, right now I have the wrong talent on him. Upgrading him is gonna be a problem. Once again, this is what I'm hoping to help a lot of you guys avoid is picking the wrong talent. Bane increases the, the attack speed by 30% for five seconds after you use a spell. So because he's doing AoE, because he's gaining levels, if you can make him do attack speed in these heavy combat times, he'll really pop off. So I do think Bane is definitely the way to go. I chose Drain Life. I was like, oh, if I could level him up, you know, 20 times and then he gains lifesteal, he'll be an unkillable unit. No, he still just, he's, he just dies, right? If they get some, some tank on him, an abomination pulls him in, it's a wrap. So the, the lifesteal didn't work as well as I would have wanted it to. And then Dominance. Uh, spells costing four or more grant an additional level. I don't hate this, especially in PvP with like a blizzard. I think this would be good. But because we're talking PvE more in this video, I do think Bane is the way to go. So that's going to be it for leaders for now. Whenever we find new leaders, we'll definitely bring them up. All right, so I made this tier list to kind of help you choose your first leader and also show you what I think is the best talent for PvE. This will be posted in the official Discord. It's also right here if you want to take a picture of it. Obviously, I'm hiding Rend, unfortunately. Uh, but I did uh, ratings S, A, B, C, D, 
and then it cascades down. So if you get to choose one of these top three, these top three, oh, it's hard to mirror my finger here. Uh, Baron Rivendare, I think you want to choose him out of those three. But if you don't get to choose Baron Rivendare, choose Tyrion. If you don't get to choose Tyrion, choose Rend. Those three characters will blast you through the PvE campaign. And they're great in their respective dungeons. Now, right now, it's Alliance Week as far as dungeons go. So Tyrion does kind of pull ahead if you're going to be playing hardcore. But that's quickly going to shift. Um, what I will say is we've recently had an undead dungeon. So it might take a bit for that to pop up. But it, it's going to be here sooner or later. For the A tier, I think we go Sneed, Hoggard, and then Bloodhoof and Gromish. I think we can go either way there. I did decide to go with Reincarnation on the, the Bloodhoof there. Um, but so what we have here is great. So there's five families, right? And we have, I think, in my opinion, the top five leaders are all in a different family. We have Undead Baron Rivendare, Alliance Tyrion, Blackrock Rend, uh, Sneed, Horde, and Hogger Beast. These are the characters that I use when I do the Heroic Campaign. Like I said... I'm about, I'm, I only have four zones out of the, the 15 left to do on Heroic Campaign, and some of them I've already started on. So these are the guys I've used to really climb far. Then we're going to kind of drop off a cliff, in my opinion. I do suggest we stay away from the BCD tier uh, leaders when we start uh, as the game goes. So General, uh, Blood Mage, Jaina, Old Murkai, I think they're good characters, situationally good. They, the three bottom ones can be really fun in PvP, but I think... We're gonna, we're gonna we want to shelf them as far as our opening push in the game goes. Then we have Sylvanas. So you got to buy with money or be part of a, a, a really active guild right now to immediately unlock her. Don't worry about that. May have Shadow Song. Again, not great in PVE in my opinion. In PVP, super toxic, super fun. So maybe try that down the road. And then Chargla, the useless one. Just don't use her. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it ran a little bit long, so I'll make sure I include timestamps, at least when I start talking about the various leaders, and then when we get to this part. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.